Hello everybody and welcome to another video of the channel and today we have a very very special um, item to review. This time we will be reviewing the Zenith Photo Sniper FS3 kit. But before that uh, we're gonna discuss about the history of this particular item because uh, it is very special. So this set right here could be called or could be referred as the first modern photo sniper because there is a version prior to this which is um, literally it uses the stock of a shotgun and a huge camera and I believe that's called uh, KMC FS2 uh, photo sniper it has a tire FS2 lens so it's pretty much the the predecessor to this kit right here um, but it is really old it's uh, from the 1940s that kit I'm talking about so if you want to check it out uh, you can find images of it in Google uh, you search um, FS2 photo sniper and something should came up um, you will, recogn you will recognize it immediately, it literally uses the shotgun, uh, the stock of a shotgun. So, why are, am I talking about that thing if we're talking, if we have a Zenith FS3 kit here? Well, because, first, because it is the predecessor to this, and second, because there is a legend, and again, this is just a legend, this is a myth, kind of a, a popular myth, around this thing that is related to the to that earlier uh, photo sniper and the thing is that um, the myth says that Nikita Khrushchev had one of those uh, shotgun um, uh, stocked cameras and he loved them uh, he's, he thought they were very useful and when he was going to buy another one because the one he had uh, damaged or something um, the factory told him, well, we don't make that anymore. So he said, oh, why you don't do that anymore? It is very cool. You should make it. And since he was the uh, secretary of the Communist Party, of the Soviet Communist Party in that moment, um, the factory took it pretty much as an order and they redesigned the photo sniper with this. And they created this. So that's... Uh, uh, kind of the myth behind this uh, how how much of that is truth I don't really know but this being something from the Soviet Union uh, it is possible it is possible yet it's just a myth now let's get into this thing so it's an al aluminum box, I believe, um, and in the inside, you will see all of this. This will be a difficult video to make because of the size and weight of this thing. This is what you have in the kit. Oh, yeah, there you can see it. Well. We're going to speak in detail about this thing uh, later on because we're going to discuss the history of this entire family because yes, this is a family of Zenith cameras. So, for doing so, we're going to speak a little. So, this is the Zenith FS3 photo sniper kit. It was produced from 1974 to 1982 and there we made just shy of 65,000 units, almost 65,000. So this uh, is rare, this is kind of a rare kit. However, in my experience, I've seen it um, a lot, which is weird due to the numbers of production. Well, after this, there was there is a very mysterious one, which is a, a Zenith TTL kit, 
uh, nobody really knows how many of those things were produced, but something, but what we know is that they are very, very scarce. Um, then there is the most common kit of this item, that is the Zenit FS12 kit. It included a Zenit 12S camera, and it was produced from 1982 from to 1990, and it was produced, uh, they produced around 118,000 units. It is the most common one, uh, you can find them. Um, the Zenit FS12 III was made with a Zenit SDS camera, also uh, a weird kit, nobody really knows how many of those were made. Then there was the 12XPS, it was produced in 1990 with a Zenit 12XPS camera. Um, uh, they produced around 40,000 of those. And then the last one of these kits was the FS122-2. It was produced in 1944, in 1994, I'm sorry, they made 42,000 units and a bit more and it comes with a Zenit 122S camera. So that was the last photo sniper, the Zenit 122.2 kit. Um, and during the years, they changed uh, things like the case. Um, obviously, the camera changed with every iteration. Uh, the, they made some modifications to the tire lens and so on. Now, let's discuss a bit of the of how they constructed and managed to do this thing right here for doing so i'm going to take this zenit e right here this is the zenit e um this camera is not working sadly uh so i'm going to use it for parts for this kit but uh, ignore this, as I said, it's a camera for parts. This is a Zenit e -cam. It's a fully manual camera, very basic camera. Um, this is uh, a derivative of the Zenit B. And the new thing it adds is the selenium light metering system. Now, this is the basis for this kit. They took one of these cameras and they adapted to construct this thing. So this kit is pretty much one of these cameras with a lot of things uh, added, with a lot of goodies. However, there are changes in the cameras because for doing so, there has to be uh, big changes. So this is a pretty normal camera, pretty standard. Um, note that it doesn't have the flash socket, which makes it cool, very interesting. And what they did to make this thing viable is they needed to add a shutter down here to make it work with the pistol. So Now, let's see what's inside the box. There's a lot of things inside the box and I'm going to go in the detail to detail of this box in the second video. This is just a kind of overview and historic video of this thing. Now, okay, there we go. Oh, this is heavy. That's one of the main characteristics of this. This is heavy. This is the Zenit 12 ES, as you can see. It's a Zenit model ES. The S indicates that it is for a photo sniper kit. You can see that right here. If I take my Zenit E, they are exactly the same camera, but the ES has this little stick right here. Uh, there you go. And that's a shutter button. So this camera can shoot from two parts. Can shoot it from here, as normal. 
and you can shut it from down here if I there you go so this is a Zenit E with double shutting mechanisms and that's it that are all the mechanical changes they well they, they also made another change and it's here in the visor the visor is extended as you can see this is your visor it is extended while in the Zenit E it's not extended it's another change and that's it that are all the changes they made to this thing to make it work with the photo sniper kit so this is pretty much a Zenit E camera with this thing added and this thing added. That makes it a Zenit ES designed for a photo sniper. Now, in the next chapter of this video, we will take this kit and we will speak of it in detail. We will review what's inside um, how you use it, how you check it, where you can get it um, and discuss a bit more in detail. So, wrapping up, the use of this kit, uh, the way of using this, it was intended for shooting sport events, shooting, there you have, here we have the manual. Um, it was used for, you know, if you were in a truck, you could shoot a motorcycle, you could shoot birds, whatever. Um, the kit was pretty much designed for being a kind of a wildlife tool uh, you go outside, you see a beard, you don't have to get close because this thing is a 300 millimeter lens, it zooms a lot, you take a picture. That was pretty much the objective of this thing. Um, so, what you have in this kit is pretty much a Zenit E with mechanical adaptations to be able to function with all of the things inside here and we will see all of those things in the next chapter maybe there will be one or two videos more of, of this because there's a lot to cover so stay tuned for that